how watching golf got me into a top university and changed my life in high school. Hello everybody, my name is Joaquin Novello. I'm a current UPenn Warden dual degree engineering student studying at the M&T program. And I got a perfect 45 in the IB back in May, 2021 with the exam route. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how watching golf actually got me top marks. I learned this lesson by watching it and then helped me get into a top university. Epiphany back when I was watching the masters in 2019 with my friends and family. And you know how there's those moments in life where just something hits you differently and you get that epiphany or you get, or you hear exactly what you need to hear. Well, I saw exactly what I need to see at that moment when they announced the results, right? In first place, it's seen that Tiger Woods wins. And then it <clears throat> shows on screen the top 10 players. At that moment, something hits me, something hit me per se. And you know, when you see that thing, delete that. So this epiphany basically came back in 2019 when I was watching the masters with my friends and family. And you know when there's those things in life that you just see and they just hit you differently, right? You get that epiphany per se. You maybe hear something you need to hear. You see something you need to hear. Well, this was something that I needed to see. And what I saw was a leaderboard where it's said that Tiger Woods gets first and then all the way down until R. Fowler gets 10th, right? So it was just listing out the top 10 people of the Masters. <clears throat> and basically going back to what I said earlier, and I really like this quote. I'm going to read it out loud right here. Heraclitus said that no same man walks the same river twice as the man and the river have since changed for in other words he is not the same man and he is not the same river and just as a side note this is why it's super important to continue to reread books or reread or rewatch videos that you like or re-listen to audio programs or podcasts whatever you want to call them because a lot of the because I can show basically two different people the same thing. I can say the exact same thing to two different people, but they get two different interpretation and thus two different ideas and two different means by which to apply said idea into their own life. And frankly, those two different people are you at two different points in time. Thus, by essentially viewing this, I think I saw it right at the moment where I needed to see it. You know, I was going through high school. I was applying to university. I applied to university in 2021. So this was back in 2019. So around at the end of my grade 10 year, I want to say grade 10 to 11, somewhere around there. I saw exactly what I need to see. Now, the biggest takeaway from this and why I'm bringing this up is the following. That results and time spent are not linear, all right? Just because I spend a lot of time working on one thing does not necessarily mean that I get the results. On the contrary, if I spend a little more time working on this thing, I can get exponentially more results. So if we go back to the Masters Tournament, we saw that Tiger Woods got first place. R. Fowler got 10 place. Most people don't even know who R. Fowler is. That's the point because Tiger Woods was just a fraction better than R. Fowler, right? He wasn't, he wasn't three times or 10 times as bad, better than R. Fowler, right? His golf game was off by just a fraction, but that fraction was big enough that allowed him to get first place. And then R. Fowler got 10 place. So <clears throat> that output and results is tiny, right? The difference between Tiger Woods and R. Fowler is tiny. And the amount of time that they spent working to achieve that difference also likely isn't that vast, right? Tiger Woods did not spend 10 times as much time playing golf than R. Fowler did, right? He wasn't practicing as much time. He was just, a, he was a fraction better, but he wasn't practicing significantly more time. Maybe he practiced a little bit better. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he was more strategic. Maybe he was more talented. Whatever the case may be, he was slightly better than R. Fowler. Now, here's the biggest difference between that. Even though Tiger Woods was just slightly better, he got significantly more results. When it comes to sheer payout of the rewards of the Masters, it's significantly more from first place to 10th place. Okay, that's just how it is. That's just how the, the law works. Now, if we look at the net worth of these two individuals, Tiger Woods has a net worth that is 42.5 times better than R. Fowler. Is Tiger Woods 42.5 times better than R. Fowler, even though his net worth is that much larger? Probably not. All right, I don't want to say anything for certain, but pro he probably isn't 42.5 times better. Yes, that's the result that he got. That's the disproportionate leverage. That's the Pareto principle at work. That's the more results that he got by just being a little bit better. So this all comes down to the following. When it comes to university admissions, admission application, by focusing in on one thing, you give yourself the opportunity to just become a little bit better. Why? Because all of your competition is not doing that, right? You got to remember that most high ambitious students that I work with 
and that I've seen and my friends, they're trying to do a million different things. So the biggest advantage you have is by focusing in on only one thing. Why? Because that gives you the amount of time you need by focusing on in on one discipline that gives you the amount of time you need to get that small advantage. And remember that advantage might just be small, right? It might just be a few points more in golf, but those few points result in first place and 10th place result in you getting to your top university and result in you not getting to your top university. And that's really the disparity in the rewards, right? Even though I just spent a little bit more time working on my one thing than someone else did because they were trying to do two different things at the same time, right? Which resulted in their attention diverging. Even though I just spent a little bit more time working on my one thing. And this, this is really where the epiphany hit me because I, I never really thought of it from this perspective. The re- Even though I just spent a little bit more time working on that one thing, that extra amount of time that I got gave me disproportionately more results than I otherwise could have spent. And that right there is the big takeaway. That disproportionate aspect that you spend a little bit more time but you get significantly more results is exactly what I want you to remember. However, that set and that stage of disproportionate leverage is not achieved unless you become excellent at that one thing. Right? You don't get to see those results until you become the best in the world. And remember that the university is not looking for well-rounded students. It's looking for students who are the best at certain aspects. So graphically, you can think of, <clears throat> so graphically, there's two graphs that I want you to imagine. I think I'm going to show them on screen right here. All right. The first graph is when you try to do three different things. Let's say you have three different passions, right? Passion A, passion B, and passion C. You try to do these three passions throughout high school and you split your time accordingly to these three passions. Unfortunately, since you are diverging your time towards these three passions, you're not getting a deep enough leverage. You're not getting deep enough competence in either three of these passions. So as a result, you don't achieve that exponential labor of success. You're not able to reach the point where just a little bit more of success, maybe maybe twice as much, maybe twice as much effort gives you four times as much success. You're not able to reach that state of success because success in many cases is a, is exponential. You get basically no reward for the beginning until you become good. Then you get a little bit of result reward and then you become excellent. You get basically all the reward. That's essentially how it works. So let's look at graph number two. Let's say you spend all of your time focusing in on only one thing. That essentially means that you are able to unlock this exponential curve whereby spending just a little bit more time, right? Spending, let's say 0.5% more time, right? Or 0.5 times more time working on your one thing gives you 16, give 200, 1000 times more results, right? That right there is the secret of disproportionate leverage. So applying this into your university, what I want you to do is I want you to identify what your one thing is and then just spend all your time on that, right? It's, It's not that hard, okay? It's not that hard. Now, do you need to have a diverse set of extracurriculars? Absolutely, but you can do it strategically. How do you do it strategically? Well, you get those diverse set of extracurriculars down, right? And by diverse, I don't mean like super specialized diverse, which is what most students try to do. I mean, just diverse for the sake of having some diversity, right? Let's say you have, you go to soccer or you are in a few clubs, excellent. Like, I'm not saying don't do that, right? And you need that and that shows leadership and it shows that you actually go outside and play sports and which universities like, or I'm not saying universities don't like that, but when it comes to your wow factor, that wow factor needs to be excellent. And in order for you to have an excellent wow factor, that needs to become the one thing you spend basically all your time doing. I'm not saying don't have these other extracurriculars, have those, but don't spend all your time doing them. That's the biggest mistake most students make. They spend all their time going to science club when their one extracurricular is let's say building rocket engines. All right. Going to science club is not necessarily going to translate towards building up that wow factor of let's say rocket engineering. All right. And that was the first example that came to mind because of my extended essay. So ultimately identify what those extra workers are, right? Write out your common app, then strategize on how you can spend as little time as you can on the things that don't really matter because you just need them there. And then strategize on how you can spend all of your time on the one wow factor that the university admission officer is going to look at and they're, and they're going to be like, wow, this guy's excellent. He's the best at this thing. When he goes to the university, this is the one thing he's going to be the best at and he's going to be excellent probably at this and probably for the rest of his life. That's what you need. And in order for you to truly stand out amongst everyone else who has wow factors, you need to become just a little bit better, right? Just have that huge or not even huge, just have that advantage that separates you from 10th place to first place. And the difference between that are exponential results, which in this case is university admissions success, right? 
that's all I have for this video. Go ahead, apply that. And remember, one of the easiest things to do more stuff is to stop doing all the useless things that you're currently doing right now. All right. And this happens all the time. Students come up to me and they say, I want to do more of this. I, how do I spend, how do I spend more time studying? How do I spend more time doing this? The answer isn't to spend more time studying. The answer is to cut down on the things that don't matter so that you can then spend more time studying. But most people approach it the other way around, all right, where they try to spend more time studying and they try to find ways where they can study more. And then as a result, they maybe cut things down. Maybe they don't. Maybe they just try to work harder, whatever that means, or they become more efficient. Who knows? That isn't the best way to approach it. Instead, approach it by first asking yourself, what do I need to stop doing in order, so, in order for me to have the time to work on the one thing that truly matters, in order for me to have the time to study and do whatever else I need to do in order to reach excellence. All right, that's what I have for you today. Hope this helped. Watch golf. Help me again. Don't, don't, don't take away that you need to watch golf at the end of this video. I think there's some people who might do that. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying that by watching golf, I got that epiphany, which changed my life. And hopefully it has as well. Hopefully you understand that through this new perspective, you can, <clears throat> you can differentiate that six, that res And I like, I like to do this because this is just a small amount of, of work that you need to do in order to get a larger result, right? It's that disproportionate leverage disproportionate meaning I can just put a little bit in and get more out right leverage that is the biggest concept that you need to understand and most students don't know this right just ask anyone in your school they likely don't know that principle and if they do know it they aren't doing it all right so I want you to go ahead I want you to do that achieve success if you want to read my extended essay by the way you can type in the code extended essay capital E and capital E in the middle extended capital E essay so extended with a capital E then essay with a capital E type that in as one word in the Link down below in the Easter egg, grizzlyleaf.com slash Easter egg. Type that in down below and you get to read my extended essay for free. You can do that in the link down below or you can check out my video where I read it for you and then you can read it as well. So go check that out. Hope this video was helpful. Go ahead and apply these concepts. I want you to just, seriously just get off YouTube. Like stop watching my videos, <laughs> okay? I'm like probably the only YouTuber who says this, but stop watching my videos. These videos are meant for success. These videos are meant to help you, to give you the results you need, right? I'm only interested in results, right? This isn't supposed to, like my goal isn't to motivate you. If you feel motivated, excellent. But that's not my goal, right? Because motivation wanes. It's a feeling. It's an emotion. So instead of riding that emotion of motivation, I'd rather you just get up and start doing this and ultimately get into your dream university and achieve success in high school and for the rest of your life, all right? If you have any questions at all, leave them into the comment section and then below or shoot me an email at joaquinr at warden.upenn.edu. I do my best to respond to all of my emails. And until next time, stay productive. I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.